Hi everybody, it's Ed. Hi, I'm Sandy. And Over the Hills 2019 is our channel. And this little ditty is about our visit to the Carlsbad Caverns. Fantastic place. I could yeah. have never imagined it would be so beautiful. I mean, you're talking, you go 750 feet down uh, into this cavern. Now you can do it two ways. You can, you can walk in from the natural entrance or you can cheat, which is what we do. Yeah. <laughs> and you can take an elevator 750 feet underground into over a mile of, of caverns. And that's only what, you know, safely they allow you into. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it just was a phenomenal experience, and if there's one thing I can say, take a hoodie with you. <laughs> it is cold down there, yes, but amazingly beautiful. And the surrounding area around Carlsbad Caverns, you know, it's still in the desert, but it's a desert that we had not experienced before. There were so many varieties of plants out there, and we actually found a natural waterfall. That's true. In the area that we visited. So you'll see that in this video too. Pretty amazing. And it is. And what always amazes me, when you see water in the desert, you have what people in the east are used to seeing. Cattails, all those kinds of things. But then three feet away, after that water is gone, you're back to desert again. And to emphasize what Sandy said, the desert isn't a clean shot. It's not just, you can't put a label on it. The, the desert varies in, in so many ways. You can go over one pass and all of a sudden there's totally different cactuses than there was from where you just came from. And the wild animals, the wildlife. Okay, we're going to show you a picture of a new animal that we had never seen before that lives in this area of the country. Yeah. I never knew. But <laughs> anyway, we won't delay anymore. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. If you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear them. And thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. See ya. Take care. This travel day takes us from Holbrook, Arizona to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we saw some beautiful mountains on the border between Arizona and New Mexico. And in Grants, New Mexico, we could see Mount Taylor in the distance, which is a dormant volcano. And we were also able to see old lava rock on both sides of the highway. We saw the rain coming and it started pouring on us just as we were passing through the city of Albuquerque. We had picked out a free camping spot just east of Albuquerque, but found out that our plans had to be changed. So we've been on the road for two years now, and there's a first time for everything, right? We couldn't get into the campsite that we wanted to yesterday because the roads were extremely washboarded and we had been traveling in the rain. Um, so we went about 20 miles further down the highway, I-40, um, we're just east of Albuquerque, and we spent the night in a rest area. Never done this before.
Um, pretty nice rest area though. They've got little pavilions. Um, some people who are just traveling in their cars, they slept over there last night. They got horse corrals here. Pretty nice rest area. Um, there's all the semis. You can just barely see our truck peeking out next to that blue semi there. So how was it? It was very noisy. <laughs> Ed wore earplugs to bed last night. He said he slept like a rock. Um, I didn't wear earplugs. I slept pretty good until about four o'clock in the morning, which is kind of typical for me anyway. But yeah, we, we slept in the rest area last night. Very busy place. An interesting experience. Glad we had the experience. Very glad we had the experience. And we might actually do this again because we have several long drives that we have to do to get to our final destination this summer. So we had really wanted to see Petroglyph, Petroglyph National Monument while we were in Albuquerque. But since we weren't able to stay more than just the one night, we decided to go ahead and continue on our journey to Carlsbad, New Mexico. We chose to stay at Sunset Reef Campground, which is just south of Carlsbad, New Mexico. And this is a BLM campground. And we did a campground review about this, so you'll be seeing more about that later. General met a new friend at the campground. Another camp couple that was staying there had a very young chocolate English lab and General was playing with him one evening and it was really interesting to watch both of the dogs and learn about the traits that were specific to General's breed of an English lab. Ed really needed a new pair of sneakers. Oh my goodness. After spending our first day at the trailer and getting caught up on chores, the next day we took right off for Carlsbad Caverns. We're going down in an elevator at Carlsbad Caverns. Uh, right now, 550. It's going down quite a ways. We're 600 feet underground in this elevator and dropping quick to get to the main cavern room. And then we're going to take it all in. And you're supposed to remain pretty quiet and just whisper because it carries. So here we go. 750 feet underground. <laughs> there are two ways to get down into the caverns. You can take the elevator down into the main cavern area, or you can do a short hike from the visitor center and go in at the natural entrance, which eventually does connect into the main cavern area. The main cavern area is a 1.3 mile hike with a shortcut at about the halfway point if you did, did want to make the hike shorter. The natural entrance trail is an additional 1.3 miles, but it also has an elevation change of about 800 feet. Um, so if you're going in that way, it goes downhill, but if you're going out that way, it's going uphill. The caverns are extremely beautiful. The pictures that you're seeing in this video just don't do it justice at all. I mean, it's amazing. It's just one of those places that you really need to see in person, and we feel it should be on everybody's bucket list. So the one bad thing about Carlsbad Caverns is they are not pet friendly at all. It says right on their website um, that pets are not allowed in the caverns, which we can understand, um, but they're also forbidding you from leaving pets in your vehicle, period, at all. We usually will leave General in the truck with the truck running and the AC going so he's perfectly comfortable while we're doing our hikes and we know that the truck is one of General's safe places so he feels perfectly comfortable in there 
but because we were nervous about the park's policy, we did decide to leave General in the trailer while we were doing our hike at the caverns.
Ed found Sitting Bull Falls on Google Maps. And even though some of the people in their reviews uh, said that the waterfall might be dried up by this time of the year, um, which was around early May, we did, did decide to take the one hour drive out there anyway to see if we could see it. And we passed through some open range cattle area on the way there. That was pretty cool. The waterfall was really awesome and a very busy place on a hot day. We drove by some playful horses on our way back home. We also wanted to take in the bat flight program at the caverns, which is free to everyone, even if you didn't buy a ticket to enter the caverns. So we drove back up to the park shortly before sunset and we saw this wild animal on our way up the hill. We had never seen wild boars before, but found out later they're actually pretty common in the southern states. The bat flight was actually pretty awesome. They don't let you take pictures because it would scare and disorient the bats if a flash was to accidentally go off. And it was a little early in the season to see a lot of bats. We were there at the beginning of May and the bat flight program doesn't officially start until Memorial Day. But still very interesting to see them coming out of the cave and flying off to find food.